Microsoft Office 365. With Office 365, evolution happens. Things can change. It is web-based and it's maintained by Microsoft, so expect minor changes as time goes on. In this video, we'll explore some of the most recent changes, as of January 2015. Here, I'm at the sign-in page. I've typed in an email address and a password, so I'll just click sign in. Here, at this landing page, we've got Hello Cheryl, so there's a nice welcome. We also have Install Office on your PC. Here are some applications that you can install directly on your local machine. Also, if you have a Mac, you can download the latest version of Office for Mac, as well as for your smartphone or iPad. I could click Install now and get going. On the bottom here, we have Collaborate with Office Online. We have quick and easy access to what we're used to. I can click on any of these and access those features from here. The navigation style that many of us were used to lived on the top right of the screen. Most recently, navigation has moved to the upper left corner. I can click here, and I can very easily navigate. I'll begin by clicking on Outlook. Right away, I can notice this new clean look. From here, I can click on Office 365, and I'm brought back to that landing page. I can click on Outlook from here. And what I can do is click on this app section, and as I hover over each app, I have three dots. And here I can tell that they're pinned to that app launcher. If I'd like to, I can pin to the navigation bar. I'll do the same thing with calendar. And maybe I'd like to add SharePoint, so I'll hover here and pin that to my navigation bar. So now when I click away, I can easily access these features from the navigation bar. So this is customizable. If I right click, I can unpin them. Taking a look at Outlook, we can see one-click access to filter our messages. I can select All, Unread, To Me, and Flagged with a single click. So I'll click on Unread. I can click To Me. And if I have any flagged messages, I'll click here. I'm going to click back on All. Cheryl has just received a new message, so we'll click here, and we can get a preview. In the email signature, we have an address. So what I can do is click on Bing Maps, and Outlook easily goes out to Bing, and I get a very nice map showing me exactly where the address is. Next, I'll move over here to Folders. If I have my Inbox, I can click on More, and we have Favorites, and I can expand this. I can always click on the plus and add an additional folder on the bottom. We also have the ability to keep showing all folders, or to only show the favorites. We also have a section here for groups. So I can expand and collapse, and we've created a group called Project Team. Here we can see Welcome to My Team Group. We can use the group to share ideas, files, and important dates. We can start conversations, view group files, we can also use the calendar. Over here we can start group conversations and communicate very well through this group's feature. I'll click on New, and I'm going to create a message. Here's a new feature, Attachments Meet OneDrive. Now I can upload and share files from OneDrive for Business without leaving my email. So I'll create this email. I'll click on Insert. And here, Attachments or OneDrive files, pictures in line, or your signature. So I'll click on Attachments or OneDrive files. What I'll do is double-click on this. I can share with OneDrive, or I can send as an attachment. What I'm going to do is share this with OneDrive. There's a drop-down where I can manage permissions, and here I can choose how recipients can work with this shared document. Since this is on OneDrive, there's only going to be one copy, which is great. So I'm going to let John have the ability to edit, so I'll click OK, and then I'll click Send. I'll click on New and type a new recipient. I'll just demonstrate the drag and drop feature. I'll just grab a file, drag it in, and drop it right there. It's as easy as that. If I click on the gear and check out my settings, and then I go to Options, I'll click here on Connected Accounts. Here I can interact with multiple email accounts in one place, and I can connect up to five other accounts. I'll click up here on Navigation, and we'll check out the calendar. We've just received an email from John Keller, and John would like to share his calendar with us. What I can do is share my calendar back, but first, I'm going to just click Add Calendar. We can see Cheryl's calendar is in blue, and John's is in green. This is what's called a Merge Calendar View. I've added John's calendar, and this makes it easy for me to find scheduling overlaps. I'll switch to Day View, and here I have the feature to split. 
So maybe if I click on Friday the 23rd, here we go, they'll be attending the same meeting. If I'd like to go back, I'll just click Merge, and I can click on Workweek, for example. When I don't want to view John Keller's anymore, I'll just uncheck, and I'm back to Cheryl's. Next, I'll go up here to the navigation, and I'll click on People. And here are my contacts. I'll click here on Directory, and I can see everyone within my organization. When I'm here in People, I can click on the gear and go to Options. I now have the options to connect to a social network or import contacts from another email program. So I'm just going to click on Connect to Social Networks, and here I can connect to LinkedIn if I'd like to. I'll click here and we'll access our OneDrive very quickly. So here's Cheryl's personal OneDrive for business, and let's check out SharePoint. Here I have a team site, and I have another site called Espresso Cafe. On the left, we have public site. I will say that the SharePoint Online public website feature will go away in January 2015. After this time period, new customers of Office 365 will not have access to this feature. However, if you're a current user, you'll still have this feature for a minimum of two years. Now I'll click back up here, and I can very easily access Word Online, for example. It opens up in a new tab, and from here I can create, share, and collaborate on documents. I can also open in Word. Once I create a document, I can always click on the name and return to OneDrive. We've explored some of the most recent changes with Office 365. As the service evolves, I can see that things become more and more intuitive, and that's some of the latest changes in Microsoft Office 365.